Welcome to Elite Dangerous, the space simulator that just might eat up a considerable amount of your life. If you do it right. But the thing is, this, all of this, is in a bit of flux. As I speak, the game is currently being tweaked, modified, and prepped for an update in the background. Things like trading, combat, exploration, mining, and, well, literally everything are all getting reworked. So it's kind of hard for any of us to tell you what the right way is, because very soon, it maybe isn't. For instance, the mining reworks that just rolled out recently have made some interesting changes to payouts. From what I've seen, Rodplumsite was paying out over 800,000 credits per ton, and Muscovite is paying 1.1 million credits per ton. I have literally never touched either of those resources in my years of playing. And since those price changes are affected by the background simulation, that means something bigger is going on around the bubble. It's a whole new world out there right now. And we're all going to get to figure it out together. But there are a few things I can say about how you should be playing Elite. While the opening training mission is leaps and bounds above what it used to be, it does unfortunately end the same way with an enthusiastic sign-off to go blaze your own trail across the SARS. That's great. What does that mean exactly? Where am I and why? Your official backstory of how you got your ship is in the game manual, but there's no real clear-cut explanation of what's going on in the galaxy. There are factions and factions within factions, there's power play, which is its own kind of faction warfare that's different from the regular factions. And there's a cute princess with blue hair who wants to get rid of slavery. Is any of this important? Well, not a lot. Elite's narrative is deep and interesting, but it's also not the point. Realistically, it doesn't make much of a difference if you know anything about the Duval royal family, or if you realize Robert Patrick somehow made himself immortal and started calling himself Zachary Hudson. For the moment, the majority of gameplay pretty much revolves around the intricacies of flying your ship, moving cargo, and shooting things. That said, it wouldn't be the worst thing to brush up on some topics in the universe. Events like the first Thargoid War will give you a little insight into who these aliens are and why they rightfully hate us. It can also lead to in-game places that pay off in both material rewards and lore. You could do worse than spending some time reading the codex on the right side nav panel. And more importantly, it can lead to some interesting mysteries. It's also worth pointing out that while Elite may be light on narrative, the puzzles it does use can be insanely complex and they were never, ever meant to be solved alone. The best resource for Elite is far and away its community, and the sub-communities inside of it. Discord groups, squadrons, the official forums, and the multiple subreddits are all great resources to meet up with other pilots and fly together, or discuss tactics and issues, and ask questions about the game. Background nasty, simulation nasty. groups, combat groups, YouTube groups, SRV racing groups, ganker groups, lore groups, and groups that help you with fuel if you get stranded, or repairs if you're too damaged to fly. There's even a group that likes to smash orcas into each other on weekends, demolition derby style. The community is rich with fun, informative, useful, and weird. So even if you want to fly solo into the distant reaches of the galaxy to explore it in solitude, you might be surprised to find out you aren't the only one who wants to be left alone. Groups like Canon Research have built tools for you to be able to explore parts of the galaxy that actually need exploring, and be able to contribute back to them with your own scan data. 
And if you feel safer traveling in a pack, there's groups for that too. Find a group or several and make friends across the galaxy. You will be all the better for it. While Elite does have an expansive and ambitious playstyle, it can struggle with telling you important information. What you see on the screen now is a list of third-party tools compiled by Commander Heartkicker. Tools like Coriolis allow you to try out ship builds before you spend money on parts, while sites like Anara will help you find the best station to sell your minerals. The Wave Scanner will teach you how to read your SRV's radar and planet surfaces, and the HUD Color Theme Editor will walk you through tweaking your ship's colors to be a bit less... orange. If you're interested in discovering the unexplored, selling for top dollar, or just looking to keep track of what you need to get those dirty drag drives up to snuff, then these tools are a necessity. And you can even have AI crewmates. Say hi, Kate. Hi there, I am Kate. I'm based on technology reporter and author Kate Russell. And all this is a lot to take in. If you didn't know before, you might feel a bit overwhelmed to find out you can have a professional SRV race and a neon green HUD. You also might be worried that you need to use these resources to get a Corvette or an Anaconda as fast as possible so you can keep up. So in the words of a much better writer, I will simply say, don't panic. Elite is not like other games. A bigger or more expensive ship does not necessarily mean a better ship. And in fact, depending on what you're doing, it can be actively worse. There is no need to rush here. The first couple hundred hours of this game when you're learning to fly or how to fight or where to go and gradually building yourself up from nothing are the absolute best part of Elite Dangerous. I'll ask you, please don't rush through it. You will rob yourself of a great adventure. So, how are you supposed to play Elite Dangerous? Know where you are, see who you're with, learn how to live, and don't panic. Fly smarter, Commander.